Hi there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. I am always looking for a way to use up the existing glitter that I have and there is nothing that bugs me more than glitter coming off. So these cards that I'm going to show you today are definitely a way of making sure that the glitter stays put. Now I'm going to show you two different kind of techniques here for masking. The first one is going to be the low tech tape. In my case this is the mint tape from scrapbook.com. It is a fantastic low tech tape. And the other one here I'm going to use the Gina K masking paper and I'm just deciding if I wanted a circle or an oval and I ended up going with an oval and I am going to cut that out in my die cutting machine and make sure that I have a nice mask. I want to use the inside here but I will save those other pieces and pop them back into the packet to use for another project. Now I am popping this down onto some 110 pound Recollections brand paper and I am just trying to get this roughly centered in the middle. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock that I am working on. And I guess for this technique, you want a medium heavyweight cardstock, something that is going to hold up to all of the embossing that we are going to do. Now, I am going to start off here with the rectangle one, and I was experimenting as I was going. Now there are two different products here obviously and I'm going to chop and change throughout just to show you that you can use both of these. The one on the right is the ultra thick embossing powder in clear and the one on the left is just your regular, this one happens to be the ultra fine embossing powder in clear as well. I have some different types of glitter, I have all different types and brands and tubs and collected them over the years from all different places. Um, so I'm going to use a few of these today. For the first card that I'm going to use, I'm going to use these three in my left hand and that is going to be the red, the orange and the yellow for a sort of ombre look I guess. Now how I want these to stay on is I am going to trap them in embossing powder. So to start off with I am going to use my Versamark embossing, sticky embossing ink. Now this is a really good quality embossing ink. I have purchased many many embossing inks and I have come back to this one even though it is slightly pricier than a couple of others on the market. It definitely is worth it and it's worth picking up a re-inker for it as well. It is a good quality one and will definitely make uh, embossing much less stressful. I have poured some of just the regular embossing powder over here. This is just the clear and if you are using the regular embossing powder you will need to use several coats. The ultra thick embossing powder is just a exactly what it says ultra thick pieces of embossing powder and so it's just much coarser and much bigger chunks and because of this it's a really safe idea to heat from the back. So throughout this you will see me heating from the back quite a lot and that is to avoid it being blown off or moved around too much. I'm going to show you up close here just all of these big chunks melting. <laughs> this is kind of fascinating to watch. If you are using the normal embossing powder then you'll just need to do a few more layers but here I have one of the regular embossing powder and one of the ultra thick embossing powder. And my idea is that we are basically going to lay the glitter down on top and at this point I wasn't quite sure how thick of a layer of glitter I wanted it to be so I will add a little bit more later on but for the minute I'm just adding the red up the top, the orange in the middle and the yellow down the bottom and then the idea is, is we are going to melt it in there. So obviously there is nothing holding the glitter on there at this point. It's just sitting on top of the cooled down embossing powder. So if I were to come in with a heat gun I would blow this all away which would not be that fun. So I am coming in from the bottom and all I'm trying to do is to melt the embossing powder from the bottom so that it kind of turns gooey and that way the glitter gets trapped and it kind of falls down into the embossing powder. I came back and added another layer of the glitter just to make it a little bit thicker and then you can see here after melting it for a second time again from the bottom this is a gorgeous sparkly design and there is no way that any of this glitter is going to come off. I'm testing it making sure it's nice and cool before I tear off my low tech tape but you can see I get some really nice clean clear lines. And it's kind of like a three-dimensional little bubble kind of sitting on top of there. It's, it's 
kind of hard to capture on camera but I really like the look of this and there is no way that that glitter is going anywhere because it has sunk down into the embossing powder. Now this one here I thought I wanted to do it the other way around. So I am using some of the Verisimark sticky embossing ink and this is going to kind of hold my glitter in place just for the moment. So you can do either way, you can add the embossing powder first and then add the glitter second or you can add the glitter first and then the embossing powder. Honestly I probably found the first way was a little bit easier to kind of have the glitter sink down into the embossing powder which was already there but this way did work out just fine as well so whichever one you feel comfortable with. I'm using just two different colors of blue here for a little bit of an ombre from dark at the top to lighter at the bottom. This is the ultra thick embossing powder and I am just going to sprinkle a decent layer of this on top of the glitter. So nothing is melted at the moment. All I have is Versamark, then the glitter, then the ultra thick. And again, I am just going to heat this from only the bottom because I can imagine if I put this on the top that <laughs> everything would go flying. And so I have sped this up, obviously. And this is where you can see that it kind of all melts in nicely. And honestly, both versions of this give a really similar effect. I can't see any difference. However, here when I did just one layer of the ultra thick, you can see there is sort of some dimples in the embossing. And just for a much smoother look, I added another layer of the embossing powder so before you put your ink pad your embossing ink pad down on there you want to make sure there is absolutely no loose glitter around the edges otherwise that will end up on your embossing pad but I added another layer of Versamark then another layer of the ultra clear again you can just do this with your um, normal regular embossing powders whatever you have in your stash would work fine and again don't get me wrong there are lots of different embossing powders out there that do glittery embossing powders and things but for me I just prefer to use what I have already and I'm using what is in my stash and I already have the glitters and I already have the embossing powders I mean perhaps you could experiment with mixing up some of the embossing powder with the um, glitters and but that way I guess there was kind of I felt like I would need to make up a, a finite amount whereas this way I could kind of get exactly what I needed and not having it sit in jars for <laughs> whatever next time I use this project. I can just make this up as much as I need it when I need it. So here you can see this beautiful glossy effect and it is nice and dry. There is no glitter that is going to go anywhere. It is completely and utterly trapped. So this was a really fun technique. However, now I'm going to turn both of these into cards quickly. I didn't quite get it perfectly centered on my card front there. So this is where I decided I would cut this out with a larger oval. I still really like having the white edge around there because it kind of, it looks really cool. It looks like a big bubble in the middle of your page. So I didn't want to lose that effect by kind of cutting my dies right up next to the oval. I wanted to make sure that people could see that it was actually done right on that original card front and then here is the rectangle one and this is the one that I'm going to turn into a card first these are very kind of clean and simple cards after having a whole lot of fun adding the glitter now this is from the Pink Free Studios Curvy Leaves die set and then you guys have seen these lots before. <laughs> I know that we are getting sick of seeing them but they are the LDRS sentiment stacks. You, There are several different stamp sets and I think they bought out some new ones, maybe four or six stamp sets now that match with that one die set for these gorgeous little sentiment strips. So I'm going to be using these today on both cards because they are so handy to have in your stash. I did want to cut this down just a little bit but again I want to leave that border to make sure that you can kind of see it was originally done on that card front and I'm just cutting off a little bit around each one so that when it goes onto the four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base you can clearly see there is another gorgeous white border there as well. Then I had all these circles, these foam circles. You guys know that I have been going through my stash and using up absolutely every little bit of foam tape that I possibly have. I ran out of foam tape a long time ago. So now I have found these little circles, which there are not many of, but I'm going to use them up in today's card and pop them on the back. I use lots of them so that there is really stable dimension underneath there. And then this is very nice and simple because this is white on all of that colored, gorgeous, bright, 
sparkly background so these leaves are just going to go and I don't want to distract from the background entirely I love the little simple decoration but I do want the gorgeous background to stand out as well so this is the first one really nice clean and simple and finished and then we are going to move on to creating the second one so here is the oval. This is the thank you word dies from scrapbook.com. I have tie cut out two of each of the thank and the you. And then I'm just layering these up just so they are slightly thicker and add a little bit more dimension and stability than just having one layer. I use liquid glue to pop these together and that way I can kind of wiggle them around until they're absolutely perfect. This is the uh, Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. That's the glue that is inside the bottles that I use. And then here again, I have the same four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And I am going to use the little sentiment strip from the LDRE set, which is just a little note to say. I add some more of those foam circles, pop it on the front of my card, add a little bit of the um, liquid glue onto the back of the thank you. And then I am just going to put a couple of acrylic blocks on there to make sure that that really dries down solidly and in place on top of the embossing powder. I added the little sentiment strip up the top. As I said, these cards are very clean and simple, but this would make a really nice little set together. A few of these in a set would make a really nice gift to give to someone. But I hope that you enjoyed this video for today. We have made sure that that glitter is going nowhere. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye!